Hello, this is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. Today I'm going to give you my, as objective as I can, analysis of the third presidential debate for the main candidates. And I'm actually an undecided voter right now, so I think I can give you a pretty good objective, quote-unquote, um, analysis here and summary. So I just got done watching it, and I watched it on Twitter and as, as I was watching it, I was looking at as many tweets as I could and, and adding some tweets. So it was kind of a journal. And so here's, you know, what I first wrote was, if our election system had integrity, we would see Gary Johnson and Stein too. And they would get equal time in this debate, of course. And that was at the very beginning. And then I commented on the media that they have no integrity either. And they were, well, Trump... Or, or Clinton was talking about something, and um, I think this was before the debate really got started. I wrote, America, we're number one in incarceration, ra incarceration rates and war, which is true, and we're the only first world country that has a duopoly, a two-party system. And then Trump was talking about, well, Wallace, the moderator, asked Trump and Clinton what kind of Supreme Court justice that they would appoint and trust, tr and he asked Trump if it would be someone who would reverse Roe versus Wade. And Trump said he would elect or select someone who would reverse Roe versus Wade. And um, and Clinton said she would select someone who would not, among some other issues. And I, I just made a comment. The Senate is actually just as important in, in approving the Supreme Court nominee uh, that this question was already asked in previous debates that um you know pretty much that he also handed over the uh election pretty much i mean um that's going to trigger a lot of people to not vote for him she kept talking about how much she cares for kids and life and stuff like that and then trump also mentioned that he wants to select someone who's going to respect the sec second amendment and then Kil hillary responded back that she would also respect the Second Amendment. I responded here. She wants to put, you know, people on a no-fly list, which gets rid of the due process. It totally gets rid of your Fourth Amendment rights. Um, in America, according to the Bill of Rights, we have a right to due process, to see the evidence against us, to be judged by a jury of our peers, to know who is accusing us of any such crime, and to have a quick and speedy trial among some other due process rights. And the no-fly list gets rid of all of that. It punishes you by not letting you fly, and what they're promoting now is not letting you purchase you know, firearms without a speedy trial, without seeing any evidence against you, without knowing your accuser or having a quick and speedy trial. You don't even know how to get off the list. You don't even know how you got on. And I also made a note here that Hillary sold more guns to the Middle East than anyone in recent history you know, as Secretary of State, she sold lots of arms deals, through arms deals to lots of Middle Eastern countries and approved arms sales to Middle Eastern countries, which are escalating the wars and the undeclared wars. And she said she cares about toddlers. Well, I guess not as long as they're in the Middle East. I mean, through her policies of voting for the Iraq war and, you know, perpetrating you know, escalating these wars in Syria, Lib Libya, etc. I mean, there's been hundreds, thousands, if not millions of people that have died in the last couple of decades. Think of that number, millions of people. Um, and, you know, so let me continue here. Election, I, I wrote here about Trump, the election is over just based on this one issue about the abortion, because they brought it back to the abortion. Um, and I honestly think that's probably going to be true. Um, and uh, now I wrote here, if you are sad about the two options, you know, Hillary and Trump, there's still hope. And that hope is Congress. The House of Representatives is where it is at for real change. I wrote also Congress, a co-equal branch of government, deserves co-equal media time and that this debate is a distraction. And then they were talking about deportations of illegal immigrants. I wrote. You know, I wish we could deport the multinational corporations who are puppeteering these shills. Hillary, um, 
you know, I wrote she's down with the TPP. If Gary John and Jill Stein were there, they would crush those two. And and then they're talking about immigration again, and I put here, you know, Hillary will have more destabilization in the Middle East, thus more refugees from there. And then Hillary started telling Trump that, you know, he's in cahoots with the Russians, which I put here as a McCarthy tactic. And then both of them, you know, I wrote here, don't trust Hillary or Trump with the NSA. I mean, both of them don't seem like you want to be on their bad list, you know. And then Trump, she called him a puppet. He called her a puppet back. And I just wrote puppet crooked Hillary because he kind of named the name crooked Hillary. Well, honestly, I think it's pretty much over for Trump. I mean, because he said he would reverse Roe versus Wade in essence. And I think that pretty much, you know, that's almost half the population there. And that pretty much does it. I mean, unless as some people could muster four years of him realizing that they might get someone in another four years and that he probably wouldn't do too much to affect it, honestly. But um, I think if he has any chance at all, he'd stop with a crooked Hillary and start calling her a puppet. Because as, as I was watching the debate, I realized she looks like a puppet. She really does sometimes. And the way she moves her arms and stuff, it's very puppet-like. And if he just called her like a puppet like a thousand times a day, and had ads where she actually had puppet strings and, you know, um, that could actually be a very strong meme. Uh, because she looks very much like a puppet sometimes. Um, and uh, so I also put this photo here, which I'm going to have as a caption on this video. But... Um, I, and I put here, for either of these two, we need a very revolutionary new Congress as a buffer. More independence and more competition. And I put here, I've never dreaded seeing two people one step away from the White House. God, please help us. And uh, and then I put yada, 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 because she just got, Hillary got into one of these, like, y y these speeches where it's just so memorized and so polished and it just is something that sh you know everyone says yes we need to create more new jobs and have clean energy i mean how many times it's just such a stump speech and a repeated line i've heard so many times and then i put here she really is a puppet there's a couple seconds she really actually looked like a puppet um and and trump had a couple good minutes here he was talking about the trade deals and some of the other things and and she was talking about, well, Obama inherited this big mess. Um, that's why we're so much in debt. Well, Obama inherited it because she voted for the Iraq war and the bailouts. Um, and and I put a question to ask to Hillary if I was the moderator. Hillary, are we going to have another Treasury Secretary from Goldman Sachs? I mean, we've had one, I think, with the uh, Obama administration. Um, or some banker insiders, basically, and also uh, the Bush administration before him. Um, I wrote here, Trump thinks um, we're part of his Trump University, like we're just as gullible as some of the people that went to his Trump University. Uh, not me. Don't sell me your MLM stuff. And then I just added a little tweet here, where's Stein and Gary Johnson? And then Hillary started talking in that same kind of sales pitchy type of way and I, I put here I call BS and I made a note here the billionaire Koch brothers are investing in Congress while we are distracted with this presidential debates folks please get invested in Congress and by the way that's what I'm doing here if you visit my website which will have over 49 interviews these are all the congressional candidates I've interviewed they're all on the ballot, the only third-party options on the ballots in their specific districts. And there's over 49 people there running for Congress. And um, uh, let's see here. They're going back and forth about the allegations about the people accusing Trump. And, and, um, and they skipped over Bill Clinton's uh, ones, even though they said they were going to talk about it. 
and Hillary was saying that Trump, you know, was a millionaire or a hundred a billionaire, and I just made a comment that she's worth actually over a few hundred million dollars. She's climbing her way to a billion dollars. I mean, I think her and her husband are worth like about four hundred million dollars or three hundred fifty million. Actually, that's a lot of money. Three hundred fifty million dollars. Who? makes that kind of money who's only done public service their entire lives you know who doesn't have a real job no one not unless if you're making a lot of speeches for special interests and stuff like that and then she slammed tr or try to slam trump for saying he hasn't paid any income tax because he's taking deductions well th i think that's a bad argument who wouldn't take legal deductions if they could that would be stupid not to and then she, they were talking about asking Trump if he really thinks the election is rigged. Made a point here that the Democratic primary was rigged. Um, and uh, he said back to her that, um, you know, she is a criminal. She shouldn't have even been allowed to run. And, um, and so that, you know, her whole investigation about with the FBI and her deleting all those emails were rigged. I just made a note here that the attorney general had met with her husband. The emails show the Democratic National Committee manipulated the Democratic primary by having media bias against Bernie Sanders. And then they kept talking about the Middle East, both of them, back and forth, what they would do, how they would fight ISIS. I wrote here, how about let's get out of the Middle East and invest in solar and call it military spending? You know, because everyone wants more military spending. You know, well, the reason the the biggest thing we could do to save our military is to get off our addiction to oil so we wouldn't need as much oil and be more independent. So let's take the money that we're spending in the Middle East and invest it all in solar here in the U.S. And I put here, uh, for, you know, forget about the Middle East. If they didn't have oil, we wouldn't be there. We've been in the Middle East since the 1950s, since the Eisenhower administration toppled the secular government of Iran, and they were replaced with the Ayatollahs. Um, and I did have seen a video of Trump saying, actually, that he thought the Iraq war was a mistake before we went to war in Iraq. Um, I have seen that before. I, uh, they talked about Aleppo a little bit. Um... Yeah, so they talked about the Middle East for a while here. I said, what I'm seeing is military, industry, oil, health insurance, big agri, and banker puppets on the screen while I was watching the debate. They both are ignoring the debt. And, and so Wallace, who was the moderator, said that they're both ignoring the uh, budget, the debt that we're in, about $20 trillion, trillion dollars currently and it's been exponentially growing as of late and both of their tax plans would make it worse and I put here they're both ignoring the debt because they neither of them have the courage to confront the military budget and our addiction to oil and also they have no competition the Republicans and Democrats that's also why they ignore it I mean if you have no competition there's a lot of things that you're gonna end up ignoring like the customer who's supposed to be always right. It's just a duopoly that we have. I put that they also need to distinguish discretionary versus non-discretionary spending. And then just there's more going on this November 8th than just a presidential race. Here's an article I wrote about the guaranteed annual income. Let's get rid of all these programs and just replace it with that. It'd be a lot less paperwork, red tape. Put here the media... And these two candidates disrespect you by not allowing all the candidates who are on the ballot in this debate. They're reading off a teleprompter. We're getting near the end here. Trump, he wants stop and frisk for everybody. Uh, and then the final word here is vote as many independents to the House of Representatives if you care about America. So let me just say a final word here. I can understand not voting for a third party or independent candidate on a presidential level. You know, let's say you don't really like either of the candidates, but there's one that you fear most. You feel like if you vote for a third party, there's more of a chance that the greater of the two evils will get elected. Well, go ahead and vote for president. 
you know, however you see fit. But that's why I'm not focusing on the presidential race at all. I'm not invested in either of these two. What I am invested in is the Congress. The Congress is a lot less divisive. And, I mean, think about this. There's 42% of America who's independent. 29% are Democrats. 26% are Republicans. You know, and we all know the 1% are the special interests or the less than 1%. You know, we're in a perpetual vicious circle. We don't have any competition, and we haven't had any competition since the Republicans themselves were the first third party when Abraham Lincoln was a third party candidate. There are about 10 or so issues the far right and the far left agree on. You know, so are we going to focus on the five that we don't have consensus or the five that we do? Are we going to be united and win or divided and conquered? We can argue all we want till the cows come home once we fix the eight or so issues that we do actually agree upon. And there's some big issues, huge issues. There are 435 members in Congress in the U.S. House of Representatives that are elected every two years. It was designed that way on purpose, to be the least resistant, most peaceful, and quickest path to reform in our democratically elected republic. It's an emergency break if, things, if you're heading off a cliff. Talking with people regarding Congress is a lot less divisive than presidential politics. So, you know what? Wh whoever you're going to vote for president, go ahead and vote for them. I see flaws with both of them majorly. But for Congress, you don't have that same excuse because you're not just voting for one person. There isn't just one Congress member like there is a president. There's 435 members. And imagine if just five or ten of independents or third-party candidates got in there. What a difference impact that would make to the in the box. It would that break open the box. Everyone would see outside the box. And people would say, oh, well, now that they can do it, we can do it too. It's kind of like when... You know, Obama might have been the first black president or Hillary, the first female president that will let young kids know that, oh, yeah, well, maybe I can do it, too. Well, 42 percent of Americans are independent. The biggest voting block there is, actually. Wouldn't it say a lot? Maybe if five or ten independents or third party candidates were elected to Congress, so maybe more independents and third parties could. And you know what? Even if you are a loyal Democrat or Republican, you have to admit the best thing that could happen to the Republican and Democratic parties is for them to up their game. And what's going to make them up their game the most? Introduce about five or ten independent or third-party candidates into Congress. They're not going to be able to do a whole lot except just shatter the entire paradigm and bring more competition and make the other parties up their game. You know, and maybe someday we'll have 50 or 100 out of the 435 members of Congress. You know, there's 324 million people in the U.S. 219 million people are registered to vote, or eligible to vote, I'm sorry, and 146 million, less than half of the actual population are registered to vote, and about half of that actually votes. So what do you think? Please leave a comment, share, subscribe, rates check out our videos make a difference if if you're sick and tired of these uh presidential candidates there is hope there's a co-equal branch of government which deserves co-equal amount of time that has co-equal amount of power and that power is with we the people so consider that hope is not all lost congress can block almost anything from the president they have the power of the purse they can override a veto they're very powerful and um and more accountable and more directly close as far as representation is to the people so there is hope and the most realistic way people whether they're in the tea party the occupy movement black lives matter libertarian green party independent conservative liberal etc people who care about the constitution care about america the way we're going to actually make change is through the house of representatives it's not going to come through the presidency when you have the lesser two evils it's going to divide half the country all of the time 
you know, if we want to have another 1776, that's probably going to be disastrous. But if we want something realistic, something that's a 10-year goal every two years, it's the House of Representatives. The Koch brothers who are billionaires are focusing on Congress. They buy up a lot of Congress people with their money because they're billionaires. They know the presidency doesn't even really much matter so much. I mean, not to say they wouldn't love to have a president who's sold out to them. But the real power lies within Congress. And it's not focused on, and don't get distracted with the presidential race as much. So thanks for watching, and good luck to you. And spread the word.